And you, if if you talk to a, a white person, uh, they can give you all sorts of uh, ideas, all sorts of help. The last resort is to give you money. It's, it's to give money. money. Yeah, yeah. We talk about how the West are manipulating our currency. Those are tertiary problems. I call those things tertiary problems. We are talking. Where I always emphasize is the low hanging fruits. Yeah. Do you have empathy? All right, so hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is your boy Pare, and uh, I have my two virtually visible counselors right here on the channel today. Mr. Ku joining us all the way from Canada, and uh, my big brother Taffy the boss right here in uh, London, United Kingdom. If you can just say hi to hi, our viewers. Hi, thanks for having us. Hello, viewers. Yeah, so uh, this is a section on the channel that we try to address some of the problems that we encounter in Africa. Not just a problem, uh, just to contribute because we that are in the Western world, I think we can we can advise people, we can talk about the problem because we have lived there. And like I said, not just the problem, as well we can profess solution to some of the things that are uh, it's not going well in the in the continent as well so uh this is uh the kind of videos that is so close to my heart i don't care any other videos that i make but i take this very serious so today uh mr ku and taffy i just want us to uh discuss what i believe is a problem to me because it might not really be a problem to you based on your the way you uh, look at things or the way you tackle things and the way the world is going. So like I said, it might not be a problem to you. That is why I have to come up with this topic so that uh, we can express our views and see how we can discuss this. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, what I call the exodus of African talent the exodus of African brands to the Western world. This is not just a migration issue. Migration is, is, a, is a general word, but I'm talking about the brands, the concept that the Western world is using to grab our talent to their own world. So, uh, without further ado, uh, I will start from my right school friend. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, thank you for having me, and um, I think this is um, part of the conversation we, we have been having in so many occasions. So, because um, I mean, for myself, um, I left Nigeria 20, 17 years ago to come to uh, to Canada, and like so many other people. So, fundamentally, um, I think um, one of the things. Is a natural instinct for every human being, every living thing, mostly animals, because we belong to the class of animals. We have two groups, either you plant or animals. So fundamentally, survival is an instinct. Survival is an instinct. If you, so even if you if you hold a baby now, like a one day old baby, and then you squeeze the neck, the, the baby will try to, to, to survive, will, will, will make some effort you know, to, to, to stay alive. So if you grab an animal, like we used to uh, slaughter chicken back then at home, once you hold the chicken, the chicken knows that this is not right. So human beings, animals will always, you know, the, the survival instinct always kick in at every point in time. So that is the basis. That is why, you, so everything, every other thing is, you know, is added to that security, uh, but when we talk about security, we talk about physical security, we talk about social security, and um, you know, self worth is also part of it. So, like right now in Africa, there's nothing like uh, like social security is not there. That is fundamental. That's what we get in the Western world: social security. You know, like more like a promise of what tomorrow will bring. At least, your to some extent, your livelihood, your survival. Your, is, is guaranteed. So we don't have that in Africa. So even if, even if you are, 
you know, like a medical doctor in Nigeria, something still tells you that, okay, instead of you to stay in Nigeria and practice your profession, you better take that profession, take advantage of it, and go to a place where not only for yourself, you, you, you are going to be guaranteed social security for you and your generation to come. Because there's nothing that is promised to you where you are. So I see social security as the main reason, one of the most important reasons why people leave Africa to this Western world. You know, then after social security, you talk about stability, you talk about the economy, you talk about a lot of things. But social security, that guarantee, that safety net, you know, is not there in Africa. I don't think there's any country that has it. So it's only in the Western world. You know that you find that so it's it's very fundamental that's why people leave education is there healthcare is there you know if you lose your job what happens to you you know if you lose your job what happens to you the food on your table what happens to your accommodation what happens to your car you are financing what happens to your children's school fees you know so none of those things you can you don't have an answer to any of those things in africa so it's only when you move to the western world that you enjoy all that you go to work your paycheck is guaranteed. If you lose your job, there's what we call employment insurance that everybody pays in. And if you retire today, no, you don't need to be pushing your file from one office to the other. Your your, your old age pension kicks in immediately. And these are these are the basic things that every human being wants. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I've, uh, I've learned something there. You've talked about social security, and which is very, very important. Uh, Mr. Taffy, I don't know if you <laughs> agree to this and because I read an article on uh, BBC uh, where they had to interview some of the nurses and they were like, we are moving out. So the journalist was like, okay, do you just want to go get some experience and come back? Uh, that was from your country actually, not just your country, it's happening everywhere in, in so many African countries, Nigeria as well. So, aside from so social security, I don't know if you, do you believe on this or do you have a different views on this topic? Yeah, I, I believe what you're saying is uh, uh, somewhat true in the sense that um, social security is a product of uh, good governance. Yeah. So if we flip the coin in Africa, we've got a problem. The fundamental problem that we have is bad governance throughout the whole continent. We have, we've got human resource, we've got mineral resource, we've got land. We, we, we've got a population which is willing to work, okay? But we, we, we do not have, sorry, we don't have a government support. We don't have a, a government which actually plans uh, to mm. prosper its people and to uh, make talent discovery and sustain sustain it or is talent retention a possibility, right? So um, we're living in a global economy now where apart from other restrictions, you are somewhat free to move or to relocate, to take your talent and go with it wherever you can uh, find the livelihood, yeah? So that makes it an easy choice for a lot of people to say right um i'm going to take a gamble people are willing to to gamble with their lives with their skills to go and try and make it somewhere why because uh like you said the social security is guaranteed and then um, their self-worth is restored by simply um moving uh, continents right but then we, if we also flip the script we say, okay, why do we have a, a dire or a perpetual uh, situation of uh, bad governance and uh, poor social structures? Yeah, you find everything. If we reduce everything in terms of money, we look at uh, the exchange rates that the the World Bank and which the international uh, community actually imposes on on the African. Uh, currencies it's it's kind of like um our money is worth nothing uh, compared to most of the major currencies so you you can you, you can come here and earn little and if you take it back home it, it will look like it's a lot of money why because of 
the exchange rate manipulations and then uh, other politics behind the currencies and stuff like that. So uh, we're saying um, the retention of talent in Africa is twofold. One is to do with uh, the governments in Africa failing to uh, create programs that actually pro uh, produces and discovers talent and retain it. That's number one. Number two, it is also uh, because of the Western world uh, playing unfair where they actually use their uh, competitive advantage and try and uh, scheme off the, the cream and, 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 and bring it into Europe or into, uh, um, into the West, which is um, Canada and America. Yeah. But having said that, uh, you would find that even though they take the good brains, uh, when they relocate to these destinations, uh, nine times out of ten, they're not functioning at their fullest potential. In, in those areas where they've gone to. Why? Because of discrimination and um, just um, overall blockades or things, limitations, which actually limits you participating fairly and integrating into uh, some of these economies. So you, you would find that you, you, it's a question of um, having a, a, a good talent being moved to a place where it's going to be an average talent. It becomes, a, a, you settle for that. You'll you be, you, you be okay settling for average performance, not excelling. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned something there. I'm going to use an, an IT skill, like to, to make a, a general uh, description. You have uh, people that are coders, people that are doing very well, building application in uh, in Nigeria or so many African countries and most of what they are doing can if they can put in their best if I think Africa will be will even be the best place to explore the market compared to Europe because if you come over here you discover that what you are doing there are you cannot compete over here you understand so uh, Mr. Ku, I'm just putting this up to you a situation where you are living you have a potential of growth and you are coming to a place that is a big competition. I don't know, how do you manage this? I think um, when you go into a new place, like a new economy, a new society, like this is our experience in Canada. You know, people come in with their skill set, their experiences from uh, wherever they came from, mostly the, uh, the people I, I interact mostly with Nigerians. And um, most, Most of these, of our these certificates and all these things are not given a face value, you know. So when you come here, it is always advisable to spend the time, the first few years, to go back to school. You know, it is all because if you don't do that, you're going to end up going in circles for a very long time. Like somebody like me, we graduated from physics. You know, we didn't have any experience. We just went to teach in a school. And then the opportunity came for us to come to Canada. By the time you show up in the universities and then review their curriculum, you discover that you are so, you know, there's a lot of things that you did not touch. There's a lot of ground that you did not cover because of, you know, where we came from, because of all how exposed, you know. Until I finished university, there was no computer in my department. Not even one. None of my lecturers were able to use computer in physics five years. So by the time you come here, what are you going to tell these people? Where do you start from? You know, so it's always good most of the time, you know, to 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 have some retraining. You know, go back to school. You don't have to go through a four-year university program. Sometimes you just have to go through a certification program, a short-term program, just to just to fill in the gaps, just to bring you up to speed. You know to be familiar you know with this brand and not only to gain the skills it's also good to have those contacts because sometimes you go looking for a job they need a reference so sometimes you can use an academic reference because you went through a program at least you have some contacts and sometimes you meet people you know you expand your 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 network you meet people i still talk to people that i did a three-month program back in 2011 
I still talk to those people till now. We find ourselves on social media. We run into the field. You know, we meet each other in the field. We exchange phone numbers. And from time to time, they call you and tell you that, okay, there's a project going on somewhere. Would you like to apply for that project? And that is how we you know, progress in the system. So some people, when they come in, they still believe in what they brought. They are not open to new ideas. You know, so sometimes it's not going to be that easy at first. I have someone... I have um, a pastor friend of mine that came from Nigeria, already a graduate of uh, dentistry or something like that, University of Ife also. So the guy had to go through a, another, like maybe two years of um, certification program and all that. He did it in New York. He was doing, he was working security and was going to school. And now, as we speak now, he's, um, he's a very prominent dentist in in, in, in Red Deer, in some cities that is uh, practicing. So that is that would be my advice to people that come to this country, especially those that are coming from third world countries or developing countries like Nigeria. You know, be open for retraining, be open to new ideas. If it means going back to school, sometimes people go to polytechnics and colleges for a two year diploma. And by the time you come out, you know, your life is completely changed. You're going to have the opportunity, you're going to be able to compete for those opportunities. But if you still rely on what you brought from the tall world countries or developing countries, most of the time, you're not going to get ahead. You're not going to be able to compete. So that's what I find in countries like Canada. You know, so so retraining is something that everybody should consider. All right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I contribute? Yeah. Uh, the idea that uh, your education is not transferable or it's kind of like it's limited in its transferability is is not just by coincidence it's by design right it's it's uh, to try and re re reduce uh, the rate at which you can integrate into uh, in, in, into the economy it is a tactic to frustrate you right so it, it, there is a, a skills gap I'll, I'll say that but at the end of the day you touched on the guy who's a dentist right Yanking a tooth out in, in Nigeria is the same as yanking a tooth out in Canada. The human anatomy has not changed. You see? Yeah. Uh, what I want to... Let, let me jump in there. The only difference there would be the, the standards to which you are working to. Yeah. Let, with, with, with which, if you are given time, you can still be allowed to practice your dentistry and be introduced to the new standards of working. You see? No, my, my, I, personally, I don't have any problem in retraining. I don't have any problem in going through these programs because most of us that come from Nigeria, we know that there's so many, so many things that are lacking in our education. When it comes to a work, our ethics, working work ethics from Nigeria is not that great. I have seen it here. I have interacted with so many of us and I've discovered that most of us most of us we like cutting corners our work ethics is a problem and that is why we our system back home is the way it is yeah you know because even the bible we read talks about if you are diligent in what you do you stand before prince and princesses so the problem we have most of us is that we don't have good work ethics so most of these programs is not only to learn the skills like you said some of these things are the things you've already learned before but that interaction when you go through that program the interaction would change you because i always challenge people i think we've, we've had this interaction before with uh, with uh, with red how come for example the local government i come from is a small city if you if you come from that country now and you were working in a, if you come from my city where i come from you were working in the general hospital and you were working in the emergency unit in my local government. And then you come over to Canada and you think that they should hand over the emergency unit to you just because you had 10 years of experience. If I come there and see you, I will jump out of the gun. Because I know where you are coming from. I know that the system you came from did not have regard for human life. I know that the system you came from, a nurse can sit there and look at somebody on the gun and die without even doing anything. I know that the system you come from, urgency, is not an issue. So now you have to go through a system 
where you're going to learn these things that time is of essence when it comes to human life so personally there are some things that i've seen from where i come from now before we even talk about the international politics we talk about how the west are manipulating our currency those are tertiary problems i call those things tertiary problems we are talking where i always emphasize is the low hanging fruits yeah do you have empathy that is the beginning of it nobody can manipulate empathy there's no politics about empathy if you don't have empathy for your brother then you won't have a 911 system if you don't have empathy for your brother then you, your, the, the ambulance in your hospital is not going to be working these are the low hanging fruits that we are suffering in africa so let's take care of those ones before we now talk about okay how are the west dealing with the economy yeah. you know in africa right now in africa so if you were the guy if you were a teacher for example in a high school in nigeria and then you show up here and i hand over a class to you no because where you come from out of six subjects in a day you manage to teach two so you didn't have a good work ethics because of it i don't blame you because I, I don't i don't actually blame you directly i blame the system that you found yourself now you are in a new system you have to go through a training for you to understand how this system works so yeah, i don't I'll, have any I'll, problem I'll call it that. Training. i would call it recalibration you Recal whatever you want to call it but don't just believe that as soon as you show up they're going to be oh we've been waiting for you you are our savior come and take over here no i don't believe in that that is why even our doctors when they come here most of them will confess to you that they have seen the difference it's not in their anatomy it's not in the whatever it's in the system what what they bring together to provide that good health care service okay. uh, all right uh taffy i'll you i you are i will give you time to say one thing before we okay okay so the idea of the system it comes with the tools that you're provided to work with not only the uh, guidelines that you have to work to you also talking about the tools and the support that you you you, you are given to yeah. be able to execute your task yeah? yeah so the problem that we do have in, in most of our um, background most of our, our african countries is that there is no government support to give you the two the right tools and to set the right tone and to set the right guidelines so that uh, we, everybody can function to uh, um, an acceptable standard if, if there are standards, nobody is enforcing you. No, I get that. I get that. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have been working in that system for 20 years, yeah. remember, it's, it, it can form a habit. Yes. So, okay. so, so, so my question is, can we then argue to say if, if all these highly regarded professionals who are coming out of Africa, who are being stolen from Africa, as we stolen in quotations, and then they're coming and then they are being recalibrated to a higher level of work. higher standard yeah. yeah can we say their talent is being stolen or it's being developed can we say that that talent has been stolen from africa or it has actually been discovered wherever the guys ended up in i think talent is actually stolen from africa you know and and i and, and i don't blame the person that is stealing the talent because one of the things i've come to discover in north america is this they they create an enabling environment for everybody to function yeah if, if, that is what that is why you see that you go to hospitals you see indian doctors you see people from all over the world you know you see nigerian doctors that are doing very well you see some sometimes you go into a city the only pharmacist in that city like the, one of the few is a nigeria you go to emergency uh, the units you see nigerians are doing very well because like you said the system has been created for you that anybody can be plugged into that system yes. anybody can be plugged into that system we just need a little bit of training and here and there and then you are plugged into that system and you function in that system so i don't really blame the west i blame africa for not creating that enabling environment for these talents to thrive to develop yes yeah all right yeah i think uh, that is a good one fine we we i think we've concluded that uh maybe our people are not doing well so 
put in place the structures, the technologies for us to function properly. So, Tafi, I don't know, what is the future of Africa looking at this uh, brain deficiency? Right. So, for me, um, I would want to adopt the Chinese model. You know, like um, a lot of Chinese, we go to school with them here. They come here, they learn the system, they do their um, um, one-year attachments or placements, and uh, they go back. Home. Yeah. They go back home and look at China now. Uh, China is is a world power. And they are going back, not because they, they want to go back, but because they, they've made a promise to their government that they're going to come back after studying. They've been given the support to study here, the opportunity to study here by their government. They've been sponsored by their government to, to come here and learn a skill and bring it home. You see? So the, the, the issue that we do have is, is that if, and this is a big if, the African uh, leadership wants to retain its talent. They need to go back to the script where they used to sponsor talent to come to Europe, give them the, the tools that they need to learn and um, make sure that they come back home and implement what they've learned. That's the only way we can uh, improve our standards. Like uh, Kufru was saying that, uh, some of the, the work ethic that we do have, the level of work, work ethic needs to be raised. The bar needs to be raised a little bit. And you can only do that if you have seen it somewhere and you come back and you, you implement it. Because if, if everybody's working to the same standard, you, you're fine. Nobody sees any difference. You, you get me? But if there is that eye that goes and sees new things and come back and say, you know what, I've seen this happen in there. I like it like this. Can we try to implement it? And there's support, there's government support, there is government willingness, not just support, there's government willingness to, to try and improve the human condition in, in Africa. You, you talked about empathy. That's a huge thing for me, to say that um, if you don't really care about the human life in your country, there will not be any emergency system. And you know what? That rings true for most uh, African uh, countries. He, to say that an ambulance is a luxury, you know, and he, in most cases, it's it's pri it's privatized, he, not accessible by uh, you know the ordinary person. The healthcare system is collapsed, and if you if if you have to uh, access the healthcare system, you have to pay through the nose, and 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 that, that that's that's not the whole idea, and even. We're looking at the care of the uh, of our older generation. It has been um, left in the hands of the family to, oh, yes. look, after, to look after your old, your There's old no institution. You, 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 you get me? And yet, these people have contributed towards the well-being of the country whilst they were young and thriving. And they've been taxed to death by the, most of these governments. And there's nothing to give them back when they're old and in need. You see? So we, we need to have empathy for ourselves and for everybody. I think that that, that was a major point that I'm taking from, from, from this. And, and Tafi, let me jump in there when it comes to people, government sponsoring people to school overseas and expecting them to come back. Yes. I came to Canada on a scholarship. Okay. We were 70 of us that came. Yeah. So we were pulled from different backgrounds. Yeah. Some people were a Greek major, some people were economics, different background. It was just a random pool. So we were 70 of us that came. So we were sent to Canada. First, we went to Toronto. So the goal was for us to learn IT. So we were, the scholarship was on IT skills development. So we went to the first school. It didn't really work out. And then they had, now had to take us to another school where we had to complete a two-year program that we were supposed to do. So now, when we were about to finish the program, after two years of IT in Canada and IT-related fields, the government came to us with civil service employment, nothing to do with IT. So, so the question was, what is this? So the government did not prepare for us 
it was just a project where some people will make money from. Yeah. So that is the problem we have back home. So we were sent here, 70 of us. So some guys that graduated, that had their background in agri, for example, fishery, when they left Nigeria, government gave them appointment in fishery department as a fishery officer. Not related to the IT. Not nothing related to IT. So at the end of the day, everybody sat back and like, what is going on here? So after two years of IT, developing all these skills, I'm going to go back to my state government, to my village and then work in the fishery department. And Raymond know what I'm talking about. Civil service is not a place you dream of. You don't even want to go there. People that work in civil service, they are working there because every other thing has failed. So you are just there. So, so that was what happened. So after that program, so none of us went back. The people that went back, they went back because they had connections to do something else. Yeah. So they didn't go back like, okay, I want to go and serve my country. So like, I would say 65 of us are still here. Okay. After that, in 2007, this was 2005. In 2007, the government sent another set, set of students to Canada to come and do masters up to PhD for those ones. So the goal was for those ones to come back and support the, the state university, the, the newly founded state university. Yes. As I'm speaking with you, all of those guys are here in Canada. They are doing their own thing because some of them tried to go back and they were getting frustrated by the old time professors. So those ones that are afraid of change, they were frustrating these ones. And the one thing they didn't know is that before those guys came back, they came back with their permanent residence from Canada. So all they needed to do was to pick their bags and get the, same, the next flight and leave the country. So that is one thing we don't know. Do you know that right now, as I speak to you now, once you pass your PhD candidacy, there's an exam they take in a PhD when you are doing a PhD program. They call it, a, so you become a PhD candidate. Once you pass that exam in Canada, you are eligible to apply for permanent residence in the country. Because, because they know. I was telling the name on that. I yeah, you. once you pass that exam, you can apply for permanent residence and you're going to be granted because they want you to stay back and put back that knowledge in the system and develop the economy. So the problem is with our African system. We, when we send people to go and train outside, we don't have, we don't prepare for them. We don't prepare for them. Like every other thing, you were touching on um, old, taking care of our older people. The government cannot even pay their pension, let alone having an institution to house those people and take care of them. Do you know, as I'm speaking to you, people that retired in 2014 or 15 in my state are still waiting for their um, uh, retirement benefit. So, so the system is so broken. That's why when we talk about Africa, I always tell people, let's not talk about this big stuff. Let us go back to basics. The basics, like, do I value my brother? Do I care? That is where this thing anchors on. Do I even care about you? Because one thing I've discovered where I come from is that it's a survival of the fittest. Yeah, if it yeah. means stomping on you to yeah. survive, I do that. If it means taking your livelihood away for me to be the king of the jungle, I do that. So we have turned our society into, uh, what do we call that thing? Um, if, uh, is wild, it, uh, wild, wild west. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as you go up the, the ladder, you kind of eat every Push other the, thing. That anybody that is under. Yeah, so that's the set, that's the setup we have right now. So, so all these things. So, and then you are talking about government. I'm sorry to take go go this further. The makeup of the government is the people. The makeup of the government is the people. Twenty years ago, I was sitting with some friends talking about how terrible the government is, and I can tell you that half of those people that I sat down with twenty years ago are in government. And they're still doing this. And the government is getting worse than it was then. <laughs> so because what you have in you is what is going to show up when you get to government. If you don't have regard for the rule of law, it's going to show up when you get to government. If you don't have regards for workers, if you don't if you don't respect them and you don't you don't feel that their wages they're entitled to it, when you get to government, those things are going to show up. So there's a fundamental problem in Africa. That's why everything is broken. Yeah. There's a fundamental pro problem in Africa. That is why we are comfortable with our children sitting on bare ground to learn. 
That is why we are so comfortable that on, on university graduates don't have seats to sit on. If on up till they get into their departmental programs in the third year or the fourth year. And everybody is comfortable with it. It is business as usual. It is normal. So because we don't know, we don't, like, there's this thing that is so disconnected. Well, how do I care about Ray? How do I care about you? How do I care about everything? And that is why, let me land with this. When you see those people leaving Nigeria to stay here, and you are like, okay, discrimination and everything, you know, do you know that right now, if I'm given a choice between racism and tribalism, I will take racism. Yeah. Because tribalism is worse. It's more painful for somebody with your same skin color to discriminate against you. It's more painful. Yeah. You know, if a white man discriminates against me, okay, I understand. I'm different. He's not very familiar with somebody that speaks like me, that somebody that looks like me. When, when, when somebody that I share the same culture with speaks on me and discriminates against me, yeah. it goes to my heart. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. See, All right, for Taffy, can you just, uh, I don't know if this thing will cut us off or if it will allow us to continue. I just want you to use the few minutes to have to round up. We're talking about the lack of um, um, government support and stability to create the right environment. We'll take an example here, simple housing. Um, you know, we, we used to laugh when you came here, we say, yeah, the houses are simple. You know, there's simple, small houses and all this and that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The, the government have made a program where they create standard housing. The house you're living in is the same as the one next door, is the same as one across the street. And, and everybody is living in the same type of environment. Environment. There is no, I'm better than you. And you, you know whether you're better than me or not yeah. when you come to my house. But we, when we are all standing in front of our houses, we've got exactly the same thing. You know? yeah. It's standardized and that's it. And everybody here can afford a car. It's standard. It, there are cars for the rich. There are houses for the rich. But guess what? Everybody else, it's standardized. And there is a, a threshold where if, you, if you've got a minimum effort, Effort, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be having all those basics covered, and so you know what frustrates me is that we're coming here simply for the basics. Most of us are coming here for simply the basics. You that is why we're here. Social security, social security, is food, very shelter, important, energy. You know, that's it. And it, 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 it begs a question to say, um, all the heads of African uh, continent, they cannot provide that. They, they cannot think in that kind of environment. Yeah. No, they don't think. You know, and that was why when Donald Trump said what he said, I don't know if you remember what he said, Donald yeah, Trump said one time. It, it, and African yeah. leaders were like, I said, no, that wasn't the response you should give to Donald Trump. Yeah. I expected you guys to come together and tell Donald Trump, thank you very much, but check us out in 15 years. Yes. That's what, that's the kind of response. If I come to your house and you start telling me, oh, you are coming here to eat because you don't have food, I'm going to be like, you know what? Thank you. But we'll see in a year. Come to my what house. What I would do is to go back home, work yes. hard, put my house in order, and then invite you over. Yeah. That's the kind of reaction that I will have. Not for me to come and tell you why are you saying that. You have every right to say what you want to say. Yeah, which which is why we are accused of uh, re reactionarism. You know, like uh, a lot of us, we we are accused of being too emotional. We jump into we, exactly. You, 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 you know why? Because sometimes we are not willing to listen to the truth. Is so bitter. Is so bitter. <laughs> So I, I would say, Ray, your question was, is Africa losing talent to the Western world? I would say, um, no. Africa is not losing talent to the Western world. Why? Because there is wasted talent in Africa. Enough talent which is languishing in Africa to develop the continent. And it is still not getting the opportunity that it deserves to 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 to, to showcase itself. You know, we we've got a pyramid system in Africa, where 
everything is bottlenecked. You know, the higher you go, the less the opportunities are. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't have a wide uh, spectrum no, 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 of opportunities. So if, if we say that Europe is stealing talent, no, Europe is taking some of the excess talent. Yeah, some talent is, is taking That's some of the... That's a good way to look at it. I yeah. agree. It, it's That's taking some of the excellent talent. Yeah, but it's, it's excess talent, which would have still been there doing nothing. You get yeah, me? We have 200 million people in Nigeria. And randomly, if you select, if you go on the street of Nigeria and select randomly 10 people, you're going to discover that like six or seven are university graduates. You see? It's, it's, <laughs> so that, that means that, that there are a lot of people to build up more talent. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of undiscovered talents. There's a lot of talents that are wasting. You know, in Africa, you're right. It's a good way to look at it. They are not really what they are taking does not even impact. Should not impact the continent. Yes, should not. If we can develop what we have, because it, it, Europe and the West, it, they just don't say everybody come. Yeah. If they're saying that everybody come, I would say yeah. You know, they're stealing talent. Yeah, there's a criteria which you have to meet for you to be able to come. To over. be able to come here. Yeah. So it's not everybody that's coming over here. Yeah. Yes, there is talent that's coming over here, but it's excess talent. There's still much more back home. Yes, it is talent that is probably not going to, to thrive in an African system. You get me? Yeah. So everybody's got a, a self-actualizing hope or approach to say, okay, if I want to feel good about myself, what I've done, and you know, be the person that I want to be, I should achieve A, B, C, D. Yeah. And you actually see that for me to, to thrive, I need to get out of that. You know, I need to, I do, I cannot be the person I want to be in, in this, this system. environment. Yeah, you know? in this environment. So I, I wouldn't say that um, Africa is being robbed of talent. No, actually, most of the talent that, like we have discovered here, they come in from Africa unpolished, and they come here and they get polished and they become, you know, like a useful and good talent when they are here being supported by the tools and the systems that are in place here. And if, if we can have those people not relocate to Africa, maybe just come and, and, and maybe for a year or two, you know, give their time back to say, you know what, I can speak the language in Nigeria. I'll, I'll go back for two years sabbatical. I, I'll, I'll move back to Nigeria for just two years to, to try and give back to my community, you know, where I come from. If they do, if we all do that, you, you'll find out that um, things will change. Yeah. Why? Because as we speak, it, it, Africa is still, is still functioning without most of the talent that's out of, out of Africa. Yeah. It's still functioning, but it's not functioning to the fullest potential. Potential. That's okay. the problem. Yeah. All right, Mr. Cool. I just want you to to just round up and. No, I just want to, you know, echo the last point he made. I mean, Mr. Cool, sorry, Mr. Cool, sorry. I'm coming to that. Or well, let me say, what I want to say is related to giving back. You understand? I'm using Elon Musk as a case study. He left uh, South Africa at a tender age, let's say 16, 17 years old, and moved to the Western world. So there's a tweet I saw, and someone said, if this guy was still in Africa, he would not have been the man that he is today. So talking about giving back, I don't know, is it like, is it okay to say someone can come here, okay, you develop the talent, you develop the experience and the skills, then go back and, and contribute, or there's no need. Just just relax here and do your thing. I think we owe it to our community back home to 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 give back. Uh, uh, there, in, there are so many there are so many ways we can give back. The problem we have is that we are so obsessed with government. Government is doing this. Government is doing that. Government should do this. Government should do that. We just have to get over what the government is and what we expect the government to be, and then do what we have to do there are so many opportunities there are so many ways we can give back to our community without interfering with whatever government is doing if a set of medical doctors from my from nigeria also let me narrow it down to my state where i come from 
if all the if most of the doctors that come from my state come together and say you know what every year we are going to run we are going to go back to our hometown and demonstrate what a functioning emergency services look like. like so they, they go back they buy like two or three emergency vehicles they set up an emergency it can it can even be a makeshift uh, kind of uh, uh, shelter and then they, then then they have these phone numbers where if somebody is um, somebody is sick or whatever you call this emergency they will call you know by mere demonstrating that you know people that have never seen it work before will have an opportunity to watch chicago made live you know in their yeah. own local government you know you can do that once a year it can be a one-week program it can be a two-week program and then you go they set up an emergency you need have your emergency room doctors have drivers and people um, 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 what do you call it uh, the medics you know they run they bring the patient and then you demonstrate to people right there you know because people need to see a picture of what this development looks like when you are talking about change talking about change what are we changing to Somebody needs to know what that change looks like. Okay, for example, I'm here now. If I can bring maybe three or four, five, ten people, and then we go back to my local government once a year, and we tell the principal of a school, can we teach maths? Can we teach? And then we show what teaching looks like, how to interact, how to develop a teaching plan, and how to interact with the children in the class. You know, because right now, the way we, the teachers, what the teachers do, most of the schools is that they go in there and threaten the students, you know, so we can show them. The tools. They don't even use the computer. They don't even have the tools, you know. So if we can go with those tools, teaching aids, and then we show it to these students, because not only that we are demonstrating to the existing teachers or doctors or uh, healthcare workers what these things look like, we are also instilling in the students. You know, they say seed you are sowing, you are, you, you are trying to give them a different picture from what they have been seeing. And that thing will go as far as correcting their mentality. Because for me, I was a student politician when I was in Nigerian University. The things I used to do, sometimes I don't even like talking about it because it's shameful. Because after 17 years in Canada, I've discovered that, oh my God, what was that all about? That was in politics. <laughs> well, that was, yeah, but, so, but if I didn't leave that system, and then come to this system and not only come into this system i allow this system to pass through me for me to be able to see that those things that we were doing you know were wrong you know they were not democratic at all so what i'm trying to say is that we can give back we shouldn't be so obsessed with the government we shouldn't be so obsessed that government is doing it. there's so much opportunities for individuals or groups to give back to their community you know this demonstrate thing what you want the people to see you know we can even go on a speaking engagement we can go on a speaking engagement in secondary schools in university campuses you know and be talking to people this thing is like it's like a, a evangelism it's like spreading the good news in, in christianity sometimes you go on a, a rally and preach and maybe two people you have two converts out of one thousand that's okay but if you didn't go, you wouldn't have been able to harvest those two converts. So we shouldn't expect everybody to change one day, but this seed, because by the time you change two people, those two people might be able to spread the, the influence, be able to influence other, other people, people that as well. interact with on a day-to-day basis. So my, my, what I'm saying is that we shouldn't look at the government. We shouldn't expect the government to, to help everything. us give back to the community. We should take it upon ourselves, bring ourselves together. Individuals can do it. We can form groups. Thank God for social media. Social media, we can do whatever we want. We can form social uh, WhatsApp group and bring people together and then go on a mission to Africa, to wherever we come from, and then give back. Demonstrate what you have seen here to the people so that they will have something to reference. Thank you. Do you, know, you know what? The issue that we do have in most cases is that people think that development always need, it means that you have to throw money at the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is improvement without cost, which is just reorganizing the resources that you do have yes. to have maximum uh, output. You get me? So sometimes it's not that you need money. Sometimes you just need to rearrange, reorganize 
resources that you already have, have yeah. so that you can have better outcomes. Yeah. It's called the lean management. And, and, and I'll tell you one thing. Um, in most cases, a lot of people in back of me, if you tell them, why don't you improve? Why don't you try and ah, it cost money? No. If you looked at the opportunities that don't cost money, the low hanging fruits that you're talking about, yeah. they, they don't have that concept. So sometimes it's it's just about going and reorganizing the people. Not, not even uh, retraining them and all this, and just reorganizing. Reorganize. You, you stand there, you stand there, like, let's go. And a different output will, will, or outcome will arise from that. So that's what we need to do. Because if we talk about giving back, most of us are sending money back home every month. Oh, yeah. You get me? We yeah. send the money back home every month. Why? Because we, we are used to throwing money at the problem. That's oh, right. And you, if, if you talk to a, a white person, uh, they can give you all sorts of uh, ideas, all sorts of help. The last resort is to give you money. It's to give money, yeah. 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 That's yeah. the last yeah. resort to yeah. give you money. But to us, we think, well, you need this, okay, I'll give money. Money is a solution. Yeah. Yes. And in nine times out of ten, that person will still be where they were before. Why? Because you've given them money without reorganizing their ideas. And their ideas. Yeah. So that's, that's, that is our main problem. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The video is quite long. I think we will continue on this conversation. And yeah, if you have uh, any uh, topic or you want us to discuss, just uh, drop it in the comment section. Thank you for coming to the channel. And for the viewers, if you have not yet subscribed, like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Taffy. Yeah, it was nice being with you guys. Yeah, cheers. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye.